In the last video, I promised you a, an insight into my page that I completed in November, the end of November, actually. And so apologies for taking so long to do this. So here's the, the page, the finished page anyway, and I've got some stills and um, a little bit of video of the drawing process to show you as well. And the plant's Astrantia major. It's a tall plant, about 90 centimetres tall. Uh, this was just a small piece that was growing. I think it had seeded from a larger patch of it in the garden. But it's got these fascinating flowers, um, which is, well, I say flowers, the inflorescences about two to three centimeters across and they've got these little flowers and you've got um central flowers are hermaphrodite flowers and then you've got outer ones that are are male uh, so you've got these interesting female this large ovary area here which is quite strange so i, I enlarge them about times four and this one times five this is the outer male flower and this is the uh, inner hermaphrodite ones and that's the the ovary there and you see this one lacks the ovary there the stamens on them are long and they've got these red anthers so you can see that in the flower there so although this is a white flower it's quite interesting that it's got these little sort of splashes of red in it and green as well but still quite a troublesome one to paint it didn't take very long to do this maybe maybe about five hours or something to complete this page which was much faster than I anticipated with it being a, a complex flower. But I chose to do, you know, flowers in different positions because this is how they grow. And so you've got one front facing one. Um, the Most of the rest, you know, they're either back facing, side facing or sort of at some sort of perspective there. And it sort of branched off into another piece, which is quite a nice kind of way to fill the page here. I like to go across the gutter of the page with the, the illustrations quite often. And, and so I start with the main part of the plant. So I'll start with this part and this part and sketch them in first. Laying the plant on the page, if possible, is something that I tend to do if I, if I can. And that gives me a very good idea. And then I'll manipulate it a bit, but you manipulate it only to the point where it's not moving too far away from the arrangement of the plant. You know, you can't deviate from representing the plant scientifically so but you can move things around you know if this was a join to this one you can separate it and have it sort of flowing in, into a nicer shape so i did that a little bit and did a little bit of manipulation on the actual plant and then decided to put this back view i thought this was quite nice because it showed how it showed the stem here in more detail with the leaf growing from it which isn't shown on this part you know so it's about finding parts not repeating yourself with things but finding how to represent different parts of the plant and then quite often i'll do a sort of enlargement um of parts of the plant and I, these are painted in this davies gray which is a color that i haven't used for years but recently i discovered it's quite good for uh, painting in details rather than doing them in graphite i'll see if i've got any more in there because i've used it quite a bit recently uh, yeah there's another one so there's a strawberry one you see the the flower details in the, the sort of uh, grey parts are painted in Davies grey rather than done in graphite and it's, it's just a bit cleaner really to work with. A few studies on the flower there, this sort of strange ovary surface like ridge but it's it's an interesting flower when you when you look at it on the surface and you think oh yeah it's a, an inflorescence made up of lots of little tiny flowers but when you look closer you find these two different types of flowers are present in it which is always interesting again about sketchbooks you know you might see that in the garden and not realize what's actually going on within it and so it's always good to explore take it apart and have a closer look and that's the beauty of having something growing close at hand that's abundant and the first stage of any sketchbook page is the actual sketching the drawing of the subject and i start off generally with geometric shapes i have a good idea of where everything's going on the page from looking at the plant on the page and positioning it and then sketching it on um, i start with the flowers and the main elements on the page and then add the sort of secondary elements so in this case i have this large leaf behind and i would also have some of the uh, uh, smaller parts of the flower dissections and any other details like that so all that is sketched on the page sometimes I'll leave the dissections till later but I always know where they're going 
So the plant leads you really. So here you can see the drawing in a bit more detail, the geometric shapes, looking at the relationship between different parts and the angles to plot everything on the page and then to fill in detail. Next, I make my colour swatches and there's three basic colours used in this um, sketch page and they're building some colour. So there's permanent alizarin crimson, Windsor lemon and French ultramarine are the main three colours. And from those three primary colours, I can make the greens that I need using the blue and the yellow and a very small amount of red. And you can see I've numbered the colours, so the primaries are numbered, and then I know what the mixes are. And I use these small pluses to denote whether there's more of a particular colour in the mix. Also mixing that pale violet and natural looking colour, using both of those in the flowers with greens as well. And they're very dilute mixes. Finally, I add a fourth blue, which is cobalt blue there, and make some paler green mixes and also use it as an underlying colour on the underside of that smaller leaf on the right hand side. And you can clearly see that paler blue on the more distant parts of that underside of the coloured leaf. On the larger leaf behind the main flower stem, I use just a grey to paint in the leaf outline and also on these details of the flower I use the same and it's actually Davies Grey that I used and I've been experimenting with that recently to do parts that I would have previously done in graphite just because it doesn't smudge but it still has the appearance of graphite and it's quicker to paint than it is to draw with a tonal drawing. And here's the finished page. You can see that I've annotated it as well, and I used walnut ink for that. Again, I used to use graphite to write the annotations, and I do actually write them on initially in part with graphite. So I'll write the plant name, the date, um, and various other details just lightly in graphite, and then I go over that and then add to it with the um, walnut ink, just because, again, it lasts longer and it's clearer to see and doesn't smudge. And so there's one final view, just to pan over the surface of this sketchbook page to show you the final thing in full detail. The thing to remember is it doesn't have to be perfect. It's to capture the plant and learn about the plant as my primary aim with this sketchbook and to enjoy it too and learn something new each and every time that you do a new subject. And something new can mean uh, a new plant that you haven't encountered before. It can mean using a new approach, either to composition or technique, or it can mean using a new material that you've never used before.